Hey guys, this is MJ of His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is imminent. It could happen in a minute. There's nothing that needs to be fulfilled prior to the rapture. Um, the rapture is where Jesus Christ himself descends and meets us in the clouds. The trump of God sounds and the dead in Christ rise and we this generation, I believe, who are alive and remain, shall be caught up with them and the Lord in the air, in the clouds, and ever so be with the Lord. And the Bible says to comfort one another with these words. So I believe that we are that final generation, okay? And those of us who are waiting and watching for the rapture, and the Lord tells us that there is a special crown laid up for those who watch for him and wait for him daily. I believe that we are within a breath of his return, personally. So many signs and convergences of what he said would happen in the last day, days are happening currently. Wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, global climate, they call it global climate change and um, one world government, one world religion. Um, it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. The lawlessness, okay? People don't even know if they're male or female these days. I, I look at the news sometimes and I think, what? It, this is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like, I feel like I'm living on a different planet sometimes. That do these people really believe this? And the answer is yes. Because you know what? The moment we became born again, the moment we became Christians, we were delivered out of the kingdom of darkness immediately into the kingdom of light. Okay? Christ's light. That's Jesus Christ's light. Okay? He is the light of the world. And his kingdom is light. There is no darkness in him at all. But the people that are so deceived like this, we know that they're lost. We know that they have no light in them. We know that they are deceived and so very, very deceived. I don't see God allowing this to continue for very much longer. And with the convergence of what's going on right now, we're there, guys. We are there. Okay, so, and there's so much spiritual warfare going on in the lives of God's children right now, the bride of Christ, the church. And the, we need to put on our full armor. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, if you don't know, put on the full armor of God. Okay, read that daily. Read it. We have to know who we are in Christ because the enemy of our souls, he hates us. He absolutely hates us. He knows us. He's watched us throughout our life, our entire life. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strengths. He knows what will trip us up, okay? And the moment we got saved, born again, he was waiting there with a plan. Oh, how can I make this person? I know that they can't lose their salvation, but how can I make this person um, embrace a counterfeit identity? That's what happened to me. Got saved at 11. 10 years, I walked in a counterfeit identity. You can look at my, at the beginning of my YouTube channel, my first video, okay, for my testimony, but I won't go into details here, but it was a long 10 years, okay, believing I was someone else. Believing the lies that the enemy and grafted into my mind and my heart, okay? And I was saved. It didn't affect my salvation, but I thought I had lost my salvation, okay? God's promises are greater than what we think, okay? You can be out there wherever you are, in a bar, hotel, wherever, um, in the deepest, darkest sin, in a pit, and you gave your life and believed the gospel of your salvation at some point in your life. And you know you did. Because I knew that I, I, I 
formally went up to the altar when I was 11 years of age with my best friend Susie, who was 10, um, who was later murdered, and that's in my videos also. But and I 100% I believed that Jesus, that I was a sinner in need of a savior, that Jesus Christ was that savior, um, and I, you know, I called upon His name, and I got saved on that day. But the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge also. So I wandered out into that wilderness, not going back to church, having confusion in my life, uh, not understanding what just transpired in my life, not understanding the character of a loving, forgiving, nurturing, gracious God. Because having been fatherless, not understanding what a, what a true father is and the nature of a true father and, and how a true father provides, uh, because my father was killed in an accident when I was 18 months. Um, I didn't have any of that knowledge. So I took care of myself. I was very independent. And that is um, not always good. But I want to share the gospel with you before I share what I'm going to share tonight. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That Jesus Christ died for our sins was buried, and on the third day rose again, according to scriptures. That is the gospel. The gospel is simply good news, okay? Good news that Jesus Christ came. He gave his life for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him we might have eternal life. Okay, understand that if you are born again, if you are a Christian and you know that you are, at, at one point you became a Christian, you can't lose that salvation because there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. None. Everything on that cross, your past, present, and future sins have been canceled. That debt has been paid by Jesus Christ. So don't try to... Um, work for your salvation or earn, try to earn your salvation or I'll come to the Lord, come back to the Lord when, when I get clean. Well, what an oxymoron is that? Only he can deliver us from this body of sin. This sin was so powerful. This flesh was so powerful that Jesus Christ had to crucify it. Who do we think we are that we can change it? We're born into the condition of sin. We're born again into the condition of righteousness. Whose righteousness? Christ's righteousness. It's not even ours. It was never ours to begin with. So in order to believe the lie that you've lost your salvation, you have to believe the lie that you earned your salvation. And you had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. Jesus Christ did it all. It is finished. It was finished on Calvary. If you're not a believer, God made it as simple as the ABCs. And that is A, to admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. B, believe that Jesus Christ is that Savior and the only Savior of this world. And C, call upon his name. Simple as that. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be saved. Not will be saved when you do A, B, C, D. Um, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, now remember, salvation is a one-time event. Discipleship, on the other hand, is another. Don't confuse the two. All right? That's what a lot of people do. And they believe they forfeited or lost their salvation. And, you know, so they turn their back on God, thinking God turned their back on them. And, who oh, the enemy is clever. He is clever to make us think that God's mad at us. When our debts were canceled, past, present, and future. And the reason that he does that, the moment we become born again, is because we become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. He doesn't care about people who aren't saved, okay? He doesn't want anybody to come to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. 
He does not want anyone to speak the words that I'm speaking right now. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad. I'm actually very glad that I went into as far as I did into sin because I can reach a greater remnant. And that remnant that's out there right now, running, truly believe they have forfeited their salvation. And the enemy is, <laughs> I can't even begin to tell you what the lies that he puts in. Oh, I'm sure you know. You know, he tries to counterfeit our identity. Tell us that God hates us. God could care less about us. Oh yeah, his tactics are very real. Abandonment issues. If we've had abandonment issues in our childhood, oh, he just spins the web, keeps it going. Mm -hmm. Keeps it going and reinforces everything with circumstances and things that happen in our life to reinforce that faulty foundation, the lie. All right. But if you're born again and you know that at one time in your life, you became a Christian, not a member of a church, that's not signing up and becoming a member of a church, of a physical church or building. We are the church. Okay, we are the church. We are the bride of Christ all across this world. All who have believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who the church is. And there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Okay, it doesn't matter how far you've fallen, just come back to him and embrace the truth and understand what the truth is. That truth will set you free. For he who the sun set free is truly free indeed. Okay, that is true freedom. Jesus Christ is the only true freedom. You know, when I was younger, I wanted to... <laughs> You know, want to be a free bird, you know, Leonard Skinner, free bird. That was my favorite song. And, you know, thinking that I'm going to be free when this happens and I'll be free when I leave home. I'll be free whenever I, you know, get a car and do, I'm free when I do all the drugs that I want. I was free, all right. The chains got heavier and heavier and heavier until the day that I could not bear the weight of them. And Jesus Christ had to deliver me. But he waited. He waited patiently till I called upon his name. He's there. He does not leave us or forsake us. He will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. Ever. Don't ever allow the enemy to make you think or convince you that God has turned his back on you. Because that will be your greatest error, believing that. Don't ever believe that. Jesus will never forsake us. He is a good shepherd. He's a loving father. Know who he is and know who you are in him. It is very important in these final hours. And we are in the final minutes, moments, nanoseconds. That rapture, that trumpet is gonna sound. And you know what, if you're not a Christian, you need to get saved. If you're within the sound of my voice, you don't want to be here during the seven-year tribulation. That is a time of destruction like this world has never known. And the great tribulation, okay? It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not the time of our trouble. It's the time of Israel's trouble where God comes back and does what he's going to do with Israel, okay? And that is in the Bible, Okay, we need to read the Bible, read the word of God and understand that's not, we're not appointed to wrath. We're the bride of Christ. Why would he appoint us to wrath? Why would, you know, people are saving up water and I see things on YouTube and food supplies and gas and it's good to be prepared for anything. I mean, I believe Christians will go through, um, you know, a, a, a lot, I don't know how much more. I don't know how much more we can take, but regardless, God will be with us. But these people on YouTube that are saving up all this kerosene lamps and all this other stuff, God provides all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And why would he 
People say, you know, it's this great escapism, the rapture. You betcha. <laughs> yeah, it's escape, all right. It is the escape, the great escape. Who wants to be here during the tribulation? And why? Here's something. If you are a post-tribber, this is what I want to know. Why would God be angry at his own Holy Spirit that dwells within us? How could God fight with God? Okay? We are the bride of Christ. We are the church. We have the Holy Spirit in us, within us. At the moment we became born again, the Holy Spirit took up residence inside us. Okay, so when the restrainer is removed, that's the rapture, okay? The restrainer is the Holy Spirit in the church. The Holy Spirit in the church. We are the church. So just know that God would not, we're not appointed to that wrath. We belong to him. Embrace that. Know who you are, Christian, in these final hours. It is imperative. I'm going to come back on. Um, i going to take care of this. I'm on lunch break right now, but somebody is messaging me, so I'm going to check this out. But um, I'm going to hop back on and share what the Lord put on my heart to share. But um, just hang on. Till next time, look up. I'll be back. God bless you.